let's try to move as an industry, as you as your operation, more towards sensor-based decision-making. Using sensors is really a very accurate way to make sure we get the environment right for our plants. So for those of you who are misting currently propagation crops, you may be using a timer. And I wanna encourage you to, again, to kind of move away from that. That's better than trying to do it on your own and trying to remember, that's for sure. But a timer doesn't measure things like temperature, solar uh, radiation and they definitely don't measure the moisture in the atmosphere. I mentioned VPD, and VPD is something that we really like at Ball. We've been researching it for years. We use it in our production greenhouses. So what is it? It's a measure of humidity in the air. It measures absolute humidity, though not relative humidity. Relative humidity is relative. It varies depending on the temperature. Um, you know, so let me look, let you guide you to this really uh, big kind of table here, but let me try and simplify it just a little bit. You will see that we've got temperatures along the left side here and then relative humidities across the top. All these various numbers we have in different colors here. These are VPDs, vapor pressure deficit. The actual measurement is in a, a, a unit called a millibar. Okay, but let's just take a look at this as an example. Let's take the 90% humidity here. So at 90% humidity, if the greenhouse temperature is 64 degrees, my vapor pressure deficit, and this is the, you can think of it as the difference between the moisture or humidity in the plant versus the moisture or humidity in the air around it, that value is a two, okay? So that means that it's pretty low. There's a low difference between the air and the plant. But if I take that same 90% relative humidity and the temperature in the greenhouse rises, if it rises up to 84, the vapor pressure deficit becomes a four. So in that almost 15 degree jump there in temperature, we get a doubling of how dry the air is because the larger the number, the drier the air. So that's why we really like vapor pressure deficit. It gives us an absolute rating or absolute indication of moisture in the air, not relative based on temperature. Because every time the sun comes out, a cloud comes over, the, you know, the sun starts to set, all those things change your temperature and it really can fluctuate how your what your true environment is and how those cuttings are seen are feeling that and responding to the environment. Here's just an example of kind of some generic vapor pressure deficit curves. The great thing about VPD is they're controlled by a computer, so you can age them, right? Uh, a timer, we may have to go in and adjust every few days, but the vapor pressure deficit curve, we can set with a computer, and it's kind of a set it and forget it type of mentality, right? So if we look at this, um, remember I said, the uh, so we have millibars or that vapor pressure deficit on the left, and these are the days after sticking along the bottom axis. So day zero, we might be down around a quarter or half a bar. And so we just kind of generically started it at one day and probably about two bars here. But you can see the general trend. As the cutting gets older, we start to make the environment drier, okay? Because our environment, what we're trying to do with mist and propagation is we are trying to stop transpiration or water loss from the cutting, okay? So we're not trying to water the cutting. We're definitely not trying to water the soil. We're trying to cre create a humid barrier of moisture in the air to prevent water loss from the plant. So those first two days, we generally operate it at a pretty wet setting, a, a very low VPD. And then as we get a little bit older, you can see we start to dry it out just a little bit. This is where callus formation comes in. And this is just generically for a handful of crops here. It's not the crop specific. And then root initiation a few days later, you can see we gradually get drier. You can also see that we use several different curves. Geraniums are always kind of a special case. They like to be wet initially, but then they go dry really quickly once we get callus formation. We have some crops that are very dry that don't like to be wet at all. So we make them very dry, very fast. And then we have some crops that maybe have big leaves and are slow. And so we keep those wetter just a little bit longer. The point is, is you have to fine to it. And what we know the plants respond best when we are dynamic with this moisture management or humidity management over time. 